Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Whims of Fate, where now, after having survived the arrival of the Killer Barina, and finally putting all of that terrible, terrible conflict to rest, our tribe is enjoying their second generation, as Krissa, our current heiress, settles in next to her beloved Acorn, and the two of them bear children of the various males who wander about and do their best to raise some healthy children who could inherit the tribe. And to be completely honest, so far it's a little bit of a struggle because we had just, we just had a couple more babies with Riri. I'm not sure what I think about the genetics of these babies. They can do a little bit, but I don't know if they can do enough to really help protect the tribe. And we are maxed out at 12 members right now, even though Acorn is getting kind of old and I really, really want to be able to try to pass on those mega horns that she has. Fingers crossed there, right? Hmm, so we have some decisions to make today, my friends, and I think that Krissa is beginning to understand the tribe is getting to a size where we might see some of them, like perhaps the two brothers who are wandering way back here and have just gotten themselves into a scruffle with a barina, but we might start having some of them uh, wander away because that's normal when you have any animal population that reaches a certain size, they're gonna start breaking apart so that they can try to find better resources and go out and find their own fate, which is perfectly fine. We could always invite many of these members back into the tribe later after all. But uh, in order to figure out which nichelings we might have stick around and which nichelings we might have wander off to find their own path forward, we're actually gonna go ahead and we are going to randomize the traits. We're going to have a night where the nichling gods have decided to bless all of the nichelings. And we're gonna go to everybody who doesn't have any mutations and we're going to assign their two random mutations so that we can try to figure out uh, who might want to stick around. And speaking of sticking around, Miss Moon here from the nichling gods above has actually been gifted her new traits, the traits that the gods of fate have said she might pass on to her children. And how freaking excited was I when I saw not only is she potentially going to pass on tiny pattern, tiny pattern right there, which is really cute little spots, but also Moon might actually pass on sticky dung. She might have her mom, like Tata knees, sticky tongue that she could pass on, which would be so cool. So Moon, my angry squirrel, you have a pretty good chance of sticking around. But that was the blessing that she had last night. And I figured we'd just kind of move down the line like this. And then next up we have little Almond. <gasps> who also got Sticky Tongue. Are you kidding me? That is so cool. She got Almond, uh, or she got Sticky Tongue and Big Nose. So Sticky Tongue and Big Nose, both snout related things, are what Almond might potentially pass on, even though Cracker Jaw is a very powerful gene in itself. And then let's carry on with the blessings because this will make it a lot easier for me to figure out who I might want to keep around. And little Laila here got no albinism and short-sighted eyes. Hmm. Leela, hang in there. Hang in there. Uh, we'll have to see what I think about that. Uh, and then little Mel Linnell actually in here is going to possibly pass on no horns and big pattern. So these are what the random generator, AKA the Nichling gods, are passing on to this little one. All right, and then Mono, our very sweet Mono, who is always protecting the younger nichelings, <gasps> is potentially the nicheling gods have granted unto her sticky tongue. And get ready for this, guys. Wings! They have passed on sticky tongue and wings to her. Oh, Mono, your genes are amazing. We might have a lot of fun with that. <laughs> and then we also have uh, over here for little Sienna, beige pattern so we want there we go red pattern white pattern there oop, beige pattern there we go and black horns those are the two gifts that the nicheling gods of randomness have given to her and then over here for our little brow we have got where are they where are they we have got ram horns and then we've also got big pattern so those are the things that he has randomized up. 
who I'm beginning to get a pretty clear picture about who's going to possibly wander off for their own adventures and who's going to stick around. And then let's see what our two silly brothers who have summoned themselves up some trouble oh so like their their like oh so like their auntie Ren. But let's see what they have actually got. And for Lynx the second, he has a potential to pass on black pattern and webbed legs. Ooh, that would be good if we wanted to be in the water most of the time. And then Tulur, our brave Tulur, has the possibility to pass on <laughs> bat head of all things. I think he really wants to eat insects because the other thing is sticky tongue. Oh, that's so exciting that the randomness gave us so many sticky tongues, you guys. We might really have a lot of fun with these jeans. Okay. You know, I think that Brow... Brow has Cracker Jaw, which is pretty useful, but we already have several, several nichelings who can pluck things. I would feel really bad if we release Sienna into the wild because she's blind. However, I think that means she wouldn't move. I think that she would just stay right here and we could continue taking care of her in the tribe without her like going away. So I think we'll go ahead and we'll experiment with that in just a little bit here. Uh, and I think that Brow might wander around. We could always invite him back in. I know for sure probably Mel Linel and definitely Leela will actually be wandering uh, in the world and we can always invite them back in if we want to. Uh, so that would give us a little bit more room to be able to have some healthy nichelings. And I wonder, I think it's time to call Tallur back over. Because I think Tallur has some really good traits and he might be safe to breed with Acorn. And if we hurry, he might make it back in time that he could have, uh, like, he's also the one who looks the most like Krissa and could possibly pass on those fangs. So you know what, we're gonna call Tallur over. In fact, I think even though his name means brave, the boys are gonna start running for it. They're gonna scream. We're gonna go ahead and push Lynx in front of us. They're going to leave the ghost. The ghost is back, run. Come on, hurry up, hurry up Lynx. Hurry up, come on, I've cleared the way for you, hurry. All right, they're gonna run for it because I think that's what those two silly geese would do. Um, and then Riri, I might release into the wild so that he could go and find whatever future he wants. Uh, but he does have that potential of passing on scorpion tail, so maybe not. It's really hard to make these decisions. There we go. And now Riri has gone ahead and healed up quite a bit. Also, he's such a great bold fighter. I would really hate to lose him. Uh, so we'll think about that. We have a lot of choices to be making. All right, we'll have Almond stay over here. And I'm going to have Moon jump over here so she can babysit. And we'll have Acorn wander over to be like, what on earth is going on over here? I hear so much yelling. Talur, there you are. You've been missing. Oh gosh, you know, you look so much like your sister. And look, Carissa and I have been talking. And would you mind? Oh, he did not mind. All right, so we're going to have a baby there. Going to have to release somebody into the wild in exchange, though. And you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and release little Brow. Because he could gather some food for us, but I, I think he... Can we release him even at this age? I think he is ready to kind of wander around now that he... Yeah, we can release him at this age. Now that he no longer needs to worry about the killer Barina, we'll go ahead and we will let him wander around. Let's let, and we'll we'll pull him back into the tribe if we need to. And we'll let Mono gather up some food here. And then Krissa, I'm kind of tempted to have Krissa risk having a child with Tulur because we might end up with some good recessive genes that we really want. In fact, I think I might let that happen. They are siblings, but we might pass on that wonderful Vitamus Fang, uh, which would be really great. And there's a chance they wouldn't have unhealthy babies. There's a chance they would, though. Hmm. But we do have a lot of healing fruit. Hmm. All right. Mono, if you would watch over the little ones. We're going to jump over here and maybe have a conversation with Talur and just see if, if it will have one conversation. If this works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And it worked. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead, we'll plop into these nests, and we'll see what those results are. And I think Talur is going to have to fess up about leaving little Lynx behind with a ghost and a Barina in just a second here. 
We'll have to see if his sister is very pleased with him after that. All right, let's protect the babies. Got it, got it. Lynx! Lynx, run! <laughs> All right, Lynx is gonna book it uh, back over here where it's nice and safe. <laughs> And I think that Talur might have to fess up now about like, okay, so there's kind of this gigantic creature chasing us. Sorry about that. Uh, and I think as punishment, he's going to need to stick around here to kind of clear away the weeds and let him know when the danger might arrive. Uh, and I'll let Krissa stand guard over here and pick some of these berries. I'm going to let Acorn. Acorn, what will I let you do? I'm gonna let Acorn actually jump over here. She didn't have any luck trying to get that food. Okay, I was trying to let her get that mole as some food, but it didn't quite work. All right, and then let's have little Melinel. Let's actually have Moon gather up those berries and pull little Leila over to her. And then these two are going to continue to gather all the nuts. Oh, that's so much good food. And then I'm going to have Riri. Hmm. Riri, I think I might have you, like, clear some of the ground around here. I really want to do more exploring in other directions. But it is kind of nice to be able to have the back area where all of the dangerous things seem to come from. Finally tidied up. Phew, that was a bundle, not a baby. That really worried me for a second. We're doing really good on food, too. I'm actually quite impressed by that. All right, and then let's go ahead and try to grab some of that. All right, we've got babies everywhere, but they're doing fine. Yay! Did that berry follow us? It sure did. All right, come on, boys. You guys helped to attract this berry Let's see, Krissa is... Oh, she needs to give birth tonight, too. All right, Krista landed a couple of good blows. For crying out loud, Talur. <laughs> Don't just let him escape on you. All right, meanwhile, Lynx the second is going to try to help out. There we go. See, Lynx is showing you what it means to be brave, Talur, and he's your younger brother. All right, and then Acorn, I'm gonna have her get nice and cozy. And, oh no, she can't give birth yet. <gasps> okay, she has like five days remaining. <laughs> Ew, what to do? Okay. I'm going to temporarily release Sienna from the family, and I don't think she's going to move, though. Oh, actually, she's perfectly capable of taking care of herself now. All right, Sienna. I thought you would just kind of, like, stick around, and... <laughs> you know what? That's fine. Sienna's blind. We'll try to feed her as much as we can, um, and we'll try to invite her back into the family and see what kind of cool babies we could have with her in the future. But hopefully, I didn't think she'd move around at all because she's blind. So I'm a little shocked, not gonna lie. Didn't expect that. Meanwhile, let's gather up here. But that clears out the nichelings we needed space for so that we can actually have the babies tonight. Thank goodness. All right. And I think Moon would be like, get this nest out from under my tree. It needs to be tidy here, tidy. All right, meanwhile, there's a Dodo Mingo here. I'm just going to have Riri kind of tidy up the area. All right. And I think Krissa, going into labor right now and feeling quite irate that the boys really did attract a Barina after them, would kind of be yelling at them like, all right, you guys caused this problem. You guys solve it. Oh. My. Word. <gasps> They're amazing! That was so worth the risk! Oh my gosh! We have little Prinu, who we will give a new name in just a second. Let me pull up your guys' names list again. Uh, and we've also got little Lael, who will also have a new name. She, unfortunately, she has the fangs. She has Toxic Body, which is so exciting to see it return to the family. Um, gosh, so we didn't quite get what we were looking for, but maybe we're spreading, without knowing it, a whole bunch of recessive genes. 
with those mega horns. For all we know, we could have a bunch of recessive mega horn genes hiding in the family, and I just don't even know it yet through all of the children that Acorn has had, because you have to have double mega horns in order to actually have the chance of it showing up. So actually any of Acorn's children that we have had, which include Almond, and now Prenu, and Liela, any of them would need to possibly breed with each other. So like Prenu would probably have to have a child with Almond. And then we might end up with the Mega Horns. Yeah, we might. Oh, that would be really interesting. Okay, we'll have to remember that for down the line. But I like these boys. I like the, I like the genes that we ended up with. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and finish off this fight because I think Lynx, he is the brave one. Huzzah! Huzzah! Lynx has done it. I think that Talur is feeling a little bit embarrassed about his lack of bravery and is resolving to help defend the edges of the area with his brother. Uh, also, Lynx, what are your traits you could pass on? I don't really want black pattern or web tine legs, so I gotta think about that. But I do want to see if we could get Talur's sticky tongue or bat head. <laughs> amongst other things. Oh, and I think that that may be Almond's final baby. Mm. She she has one more chance. I'm going to give her one more chance. Oh. Oh no! She's too old now. Oh dear, the babies. <gasps> that was really close. The birds could have come for the babies. Oh, Krissa, what are you going to do now that your mate is is too old? Oh dear. All right. Well, we'll cherish the children we have. That's what we'll do. Okay, meanwhile, Almond over here is still helping out with gathering all of these wonderful nuts. Excellent, excellent. Plenty of food all around. And Mono is still watching over the babies, making sure that they're safe while she also helps to, like, clear the grass, do all of the things that Riri is also doing so that we can try to defend our territory and keep an eye on it. There we go. Excellent! We're actually doing a lot better than I thought, you guys, for like an extreme area and all of the rules we have. Good job, Lynx the Second. Also, Talur, I'm glad that you've decided to have a little bit more bravery. <sighs> I wonder. Okay, let's try again. We're gonna we're gonna try one more time. Acorn is really desperate. I think that that. Tulur was feeling quite embarrassed about his lack of bravery, but Acorn's really desperate. She really wants to have just one more child. So let's gather the children around her. Krissa will be very eager to see any of the last children that her mate might bring. She'll go ahead and get some of those special berries that she can gather. And then Lynx, <gasps> Lynx! Holy moly, Lynx! A friendly Berina! All right, we're gonna offer him some food. And we have actually found Another Berina! And even though Talur might want to attack him, uh, I think that Lynx is going to say, no, there's something different about this one. Now, the tell of these two brothers is just really getting me because they're able to find one adventure after another. Oh my goodness. So we actually found a friendly Berina, which means we killed his mom and fed him food, and now he's going to be somewhat tamed. I think he will help defend us from other Berina, and in the future, our females will be able to mate with him and hopefully have some Berina genes introduced into the family, which may give us the opportunity to defend ourselves from future killer Berina. So we're getting there, you guys. The twist of uh, exactly how continued to constantly surprise me, but we are getting there. Meanwhile, Mono, I think, is quite happy to continue to just clear and tidy the area. Riri is quite happy to do his part to expand the territory. Moon is quite insistent that she will help to protect this nest for crying out loud. Everybody just wants to come and steal everything all the time. And I think Almond is growing a little bit curious about what life is like. Maybe where there's less, more trees, less of a one angry, chattery aunt who refuses to share the nuts. So I think Almond might start to try to explore out towards the other trees and catch an eye on her newest sibling, uh, a Prenu. Oh, who needs a new name? All right, so this guy's name is actually going to be 
fox from the vampire fox and i love that we kind of have a theme of a lot of animals because we do happen to be an animal loving community and that means we end up with a ton of animal names I always think that's so fun because I don't know anywhere else that has quite as many animal names as we do. So welcome to Little Fox. And then right over here, we're actually going to have Sunny from Hannah Hannah who suggested the name Sunny. And I think it's perfect for one of our gorgeous, toxic bodied little girls. Just look at her. I really hope we can pass on something great with her genes in the future. But all right, guys, with hopefully, hopefully one last baby from Acorn, I don't know if we're going to be able to, like, end up having one last child with her literally on her final day or not, but we'll see. We are here with a very interesting twist in the story of our tribe. So what will happen with our new friendly Barina? What will happen with potentially the final baby from Acorn? Are we passing on those recessive Megahorns or not? We will have to see as the generations play out, and I will see you guys next time. So if you guys could, do please leave a like for the wonders of the Whims Adventures. It truly does help them to do well here in our Pixel Biology channel. And if you would like to join us for this and literally thousands more adventures, do please subscribe over here in our Twitch channel, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye!